Hi, welcome back to Painted Simply. Today we're going to do a small little bird, the northern perla, and uh, a little bee. And uh, I have it kind of sketched out here for you. And this is a board. This is an 11 by 14 board. And uh, I've given it a coat of medium white, like I always have, medium white. Sometimes you can add a little sealer to that. Then sand it lightly with 180 grit sandpaper just to remove the roughness of the board. These are good practice boards. These are quick compositions that we try to do within 30 minutes to an hour. I have the bird here, the northern part of it. It's a uh, beautiful bird. I've painted him several times in several paintings. And uh, so I have a picture of him here that I just did a little sketch of him right down here and so my idea is to again vignette like I've done before which is so very popular you know I sell a lot of my paintings and vignette paintings are so popular because they're just so artistic and so I'm going to put him and we'll put a little bee right down here and uh, maybe some wild roses or blossoms here haven't quite decided but we have that right in there so let's get going on to it first I'm going to take my three quarter inch brush I have my same painted simply six color set out here the beginning six color set we'll take a little bit of our blue now he is a blue blue green so I'm going to have a little blue violet into the sky here just so he's not all exactly the same so I'll take some blue and some violet to, and some red violet and make a nice light colored blue here kind of a pretty we'll thin that with just a little bit of extender we can gray that ever so ever so little with just a touch of the of the uh, black or you could also use a little bit of red into that too so first we'll we'll start some nice strokes of that always have your paper towel out here and we'll just just power through like this with that just push that around and this is where I love that vignetting of the color, you know, to push the color through. And right around their face, you know, just like we did with Cardinal and some of the others that we, we painted on here, I like to put a little bit of that lighter color, you know, coming through, splashing through like that, that, that just gives that nice um, uh, contrast there, that clarity there that's just really nice onto the bird. So we'll put some of that right through there like that. That's real pretty. Maybe even a little bit more powerful of white right there. Just light color like that. And uh, just let this vignette out here to the side. Just scrub some of this out. Out like that. Let some of it just go right off the board right up there. And some of it go right back through here. I love vignetting like this. Just very, very artistic. Let's go back into some of our greens. So we'll make a nice soft green here. Some Hansa yellow and some of our um, Thalo blue here. Nice soft green. Let's get a little bit of black into that. Just to tone that down just a little bit. And let's drop a little bit of green in here. And through where we might have some of our motion of our other... Uh, stuff coming through and then we'll vignette that out here like this as well we'll just vignette that out here we'll let that go a little lighter a little softer out here just vignette those two together strike those colors it's very pretty that way and it's i love how these work together so now we have a nice setup here for an area for um our bird and uh, the little bee. Now you can paint these with small filberts, small flats. I'm going to use the small round. You know, there's a, a variety of them. I have a variety of ways to paint them. I paint a lot of birds. I paint a lot of roses and paint a lot of flowers. And I always try to paint them differently so I don't get into habits with it. So I'm going to use a smaller, um, maybe like a little number four here today. We'll do a little bit of a sketch painting here. And I'll take some red and a little bit of black here and red and black and and you'll see that in the online learning center the of the website you know and there's a whole section in there on color mixing that I suggest that you go spend some time in there and uh, practice some of that color mixing onto your uh, um, onto your palette there's a thing called in there the paint and brush mixing or just mixing and just go find that section in there. I'm just going to use the corner or the edge of the brush here like this. And we'll draw down through what will be the stem line here. And we'll let it just vignette out here. Just, just let that just soften out like that. There. We can get a little heavier out through here. 
um, we can add some other little touches of it out through here maybe a little bit more yellow or something with that and and just very sketchy see I like to just put it in very sketchy like that um, beautiful roses uh, maybe some uh, well, let's see, we have a blue bird who's going to have some yellow on him and a little bee and stuff. So it might be nice to do like the uh, uh, yellow, yellow type roses or something like that as well here. So let's see, we might add a little more red into them and stuff. But let's just put a little bit of, take a little haunts of yellow, tone it right down here, a little of that green and brown. And move that color, move those colors together. Let's just, we'll paint some little open roses here. And... Let's just put those on, that color on. And, you know, we can always add a couple of different colors to this. So uh, let's. this will be more of a bud here we'll do. And we'll do one here that crosses this a little bit and turns sideways here. So let's put that. Now, sometimes I start directly with the bird. Sometimes I'll sketch in the design like this and look at the colors a little bit. Just, and keeping it very casual. See, we want to keep everything very casual. Use your finger, destroy the edges. There's a lost edges. And in the technique sections, you should, um, you know, review that technique section. These are all good techniques uh, that I use. There's over 16 of them that I use into Paint It Simply as far as lost edges and using my fingers and doing blur, blur-based coating, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of those in there, and you need to, review and and be aware of those and make those just part of you as an artist and then you'll have an easier time painting easier time so we'll we'll put that there let's just put a little dark color here on to uh our bee for right now we know we're going to have a little bee right down here and he's going to have a little yellow and a black here so we know he's going to go right in there like that okay and we might just take a little bit of our blue into that light sky color, into that black, make kind of a lighter gray color, and just suggest where his wings are going to be right now. And a little bit of that yellow coming in that he'll have, a little bumblebee there, with some of that yellow in there. So we'll leave that for right now. And we'll come up here with our bird. And uh, we're going to look for an undertone. That's what I do first, is I look for undertone. So I'm going to, I've got kind of a blue-gray color that I want to have as an undertone here. So, and he's onto the blue-green side, so a little more thalo blue. I'm just going to go right up here into my sky color, right up in here like this, and find that nice gray. Some of this red in there really makes a beautiful gray color in there as well with him. And we will start here just with the number four here. And I start with short strokes like this. Let's come in just a bit closer now. We're gonna paint this guy. Let's start in with some short strokes like this, right around his head here. And then his feathers, he's got a track here. So these feathers this way are gonna go this way. There's where his eye is going to be. And then he's gonna come right up here like this, short little ones pulling down. It's going to round right there, part of his beak here, and I want to I want to use good lost edges out here as well because he's going to be up here by the top. I want that center of interest right in here between his face and the inner reaction between him and the bee. And uh, we'll pull some of this down here, just like that, and some of this will go on to his wing here, just like that. That's pretty good there he'll have a little lighter color heading towards the yellows here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work these yellows and blues and greens I'm just going to come right over here on this side let's set this right on top for right now right here and I'm going to uh, I'm going to push back push out some of this green over here over to the side here so I can work between my yellows and my blues here right in here work these colors in here and I'll take some white right down into those. We'll lighten those up. And we'll make this kind of light slightly onto the yellow side there. And this will be his breast right down underneath his wing here. 
We'll just do some quick strokes of that. Right down underneath his wing and right up to the top there, up under, not quite to underneath his head. And the end of his body right there. And we'll just put some strokes like this, because I want him very casual. We'll put some strokes like that. Just color, boom, 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 like that. And let his edges be a little bit rough there. Okay, and uh, let's make see we have the wing there. We'll go a little bit more brownish color, brown and, and yellowish color here for his wing, which we'll just go ahead and drop in here. And you just turn your brush to the chisel side here and just, you can even take some longer strokes here for the wing for his flight feathers. Yeah. Again, we've got to remember we're doing a quick composition. These are painterly type birds, you know. I, you know, like I've told you in some of the other videos, and that I do, I, I did realistic birds for a long time, and then I, you know, I just started to do more painterly birds. I love the art of painting, and and even though there's a, a huge art to realism, I love the art of painting, and I like my birds to look painted, not real, and so. I went back to more painterly applications and and you know lost edges and and stuff and so they're not quite so perfect and I like those better. Let's put a little more dark. I have a little bit of dark heading up over onto this side here, and we'll just soften that in. So you just get these blending of these tones in here, looking for the undertone. Some of that real dark we can use out here onto the uh, wing. To grab the edge of that wing there and you can use it on a chisel here to help establish a, a few streaks for the flight feathers of his wing but you know again we're not going to get too bogged down into the the details of it because we're going to do a painterly expression of the bird here so there's a couple of set of uh, secondary type flight feathers here that We'll uh, just give a quick little darker coat of color here, right into this area, and want some right into there. And he has some more of this yellowish brown, beautiful yellowish brown, almost to a reddish color with that. So grab just a little more reddish tone into that right in there. That's beautiful. Just modeling those tones together little red sometimes hit a little green because of that black and that's going to go right up in this area onto his back in here there we go right into that area that nice tone then it's a brighter yellow tone nice bright tone this is why i love them right up underneath that beak is that bright yellow and depending on how they're turning sometimes you really see that bright yellow and we'll get a little light color and we'll just put a little light color right in the socket of that. But I do want to have that nice bright yellow here because that's what they're really known for. So that kind of sets up some of his tones there. I'm going to set that brush down here for just a second. And we'll go over to our number four round here. And uh, I'll set in the eye. So the first step of the bird is to go through, find some major blocks of tones, undertones. Not the lightest, but you know, some of the major undertones and stuff on the bird. And um, we'll set those in. Now I'm going to come in and use just a point of my round here and start to tap in the round point or the round of his eye. And that's so very important that you get the right size to the eye. And one of the things I always look at when I look at the bird is, where's the eye in relationship to the height of the beak? And his eye is running right about halfway, so... That's where you can tell. So, you know, that's where, you know, I always look to put the beak. They're right on a line. It's like there's a lot of structure, facial structures and portraits and stuff, and they'll have the same type of thing in birds, you know, same type of thing. Let's get a little brownish color for the lower part of that beak here. Right there like that. Okay. And uh, a 
little bit of the light on the edge there. A little bit of the light. And now I'm going to take that beak though into his face just a bit more. And some people start to, you know, the mistake they make with the birds is they'll stop the beak right at the line of the face and it doesn't right on the line of his head. It goes in just a little bit more. Let's take some of that darker brownish tone. Come right around that eye. Now we're going to have to put in the eye ring here, but we got to get some of this tone into this around his eye there. Then I want to, uh, I immediately like to go in and establish that eye ring because that's what gives him a lot of character is their eye ring. So we'll establish this eye ring and we'll put a little bit around the top. Now this top line here, don't get too straight or else he gets angry. And I don't want him to be angry at the burr, at the bee. I want him to be curious. Curious to the bee here. And so then I'll soften some of that with the black. Making sure I leave that round there. And then we'll uh, add some blue and a little bit of the brownish tones here. Just take some of that blue off just a bit. Just add a little bit of that tone into that area on his face. Then we'll lighten that up. We'll lighten some of this up. And this will start the, a little bit of the lighter tone that he'll have out here. There, like that. Some of that lighter gray, blue-gray color. Here, and you can pull in reverse. I like to pull in reverse. Just want to just tap this in and just kind of add some feathery looks to him there. We'll tap um a little bit lighter and towards our white just a bit small little touches in here small little edges of the feathers around his face there and let's get that back into a little bit of blue there like that and some nice gray tones lighter gray tones underneath here Lighter gray. And we'll add some smaller little little strokes here. And always watch the contours the of his face here, the, the shapes of the, you know, where these are going out and around. Uh, those are very important for the uh, for this little guy. Now I'm gonna add some light gray here. Also, he has a couple of strokes down in here onto his wing. And I'll add these touches. These go to the top part of his wing. And I'm just, I'm just going to take them off just a bit like that. Add them a couple times and just smoosh them in like that so it incorporates them really well. And we'll add those out to the tips of these as well, right out here, pulling in here. That just incorporates those. And we can slide, remember before we slide and pick up a little edge like this, and you can use that little edge to help draw feathers in there. But again, I don't wanna to get too wrapped up into details and stuff on these feathers. I just wanna put in the idea of a couple of bands there. We'll um, add a couple little strokes of the dark in here just to you know, suggest them there. And those work really, really well as with this flat as well. You could use the flat to put some of those on and they go on just nice and soft. But a few line details of some more of that brown. Red, two parts red, one part black, a little bit of that Hansa. Such a lovely, lovely brown that you can use in here to help divide up and pull some of that through a bit there. Again, it just makes a soft little bird. We'll uh, model some of this area here. 
with a little bit of that brown before we go to some yellows. That'll model his back here. And um, then we can tap in a little bit of yellow in there, lots of yellow into that, and model through that. And just uh, a little bit longer strokes here than what we used on the uh, on the face, because you're into an area. So I use small, very small, then a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger as I go out. And that's basically what I do here. And uh, let's come back in and work through our grays here. Just light little touch like this, just to... Give him a little lighter color there and just small little touches up here into his face. There. Like that. Now I have that eye ring just a little bit high right here. And I, I want him curious, not angry, but I want to drop it down just a little bit. Again. And pull across his eye just a little bit here. That's one thing I do when I paint. I always give myself the freedom to come back several times and, you know, add to and add like here. We'll add a little bit of a shine line down his beak here. A little light color right there. And then I always go back and paint it back into position with a little bit of the dark color or the darker tone underneath there. It's always a good little habit to do. Let's take a little bit of that brighter Hansa. Just pure Hansa. Right in this area of his face. That's what he's known for, that bright, bright, bright yellow there. And let's just a little bit lighter coloring in here on some of these feathers. I'm going to use the, I always use the larger brush to put in some softer areas. Like I want to pull down his face here just a bit here. And that helps sink in that eye socket there. And they're always going to have a a little bit of that eye socket tracking up along the top of it's just a bit there. So you always have to put in some of that that shadow right right back in here on the back side of the eye. You'll notice I do that on pretty much all the birds. I'll have that. And I want to start out a little bit darker right in here. Here's where I really want to play the interest of that bird right in there and then we're going to let the rest of him just get soft we'll put a little bit so we'll use the bigger brush here but we'll put a little bit of a stroke back here onto his tail but not too much here just a quick little stroke like that a little bit lighter maybe at the base of it there to show that the light color his light color underneath I'll come through here we'll Hit the light just one more time right in here like this in there that's nice we'll hit just a little bit more light right here under these feathers under those flight feathers right there we get a smaller little touch of white there That's what he has. See how they're building those colors. It builds on him. And you get too much, like I did right, right there. I just lift some of that out. I'll just lift those colors out. There, like that. And um, we can add even a, a stroke or two of just a little bit of a lighter yellow through here. Just to, to say you did a little bit. You know, just just a little there. And that's, that's looking pretty good on him. And I don't want to do too much to him because this is just a little compositional type of thing. And 
you know I don't li I like to do full paintings and then I like to do these so I'm just going to take my brush right here lightly and just add a little more character right around his face how this goes through there like that just little bits of the of the light light areas here going through little light little shines of light feathers and stuff like that that just kind of break him up a little bit more and we'll take a, a little bit more of our blue stroke down makes that wing there there we go maybe a corner like that see I do this sometimes too I'll just use that corner to just put a little edge of light right on the edge of that wing there and that uh, that looks pretty good little touches of the the blue going through he's a pretty little bird now so we have that there let's go down and uh, let's work through uh, a little more detail here onto our bee we'll take some Hansa so see it's real quick little painting I like to work very fast very casual and sketchy. We'll take some Hansa there and uh, let's get a little bit of this brown black. We'll just kind of tap that into our B here. Right in there like that. A little lighter yellow of the Hansa and white here. Uh, little touches of that. There. Some of the gray from that bird will come through and add right into this this into the bee right now and then we'll paint it back I do this a lot I'll, I'll put in the here and I'll paint it back with some black some nice black here to uh, to soften that in let's work our take a little bit of this yellow soften this down just a bit and let this Come up, come in between uh, maybe a little reddish tone, kind of reddish brown tone into that yellow there just a bit. So it just adds a little more tone. You, when we're, I'm thinking about this and building this, I'm thinking about building all sides close to each other. So I'm building this side of the bee more than this side of the bee. Just like I built this side of the, ro the, the bird here more than that side there so that there's more interest going towards each other. So the viewer's eye is drawn towards uh, each of the, uh, you know, each other. So you see the bee, then you go up and you see the bird, you know. And that's a good way to do it. We'll just soften this out just a bit. Smooth. Just kind of blend out that bee there just a bit. Let's take a real soft, I don't like to use like just gray. I'll put a real soft uh, little white shine and stuff like that onto the wings. Whoa, that's got a little black in my in my uh, finger there. Didn't clean my finger off between that, so I'll just lift some of that out. Here, take a little extender and a brush and just kind of lift some of that out. And you can always hide some of it with some greens and stuff too, so... We'll just hide some of that in there. And that's good. Just kind of remember to clean your finger <laughs> when you do that. Don't forget to, you know, clean your finger. Sometimes that, uh, you know, that finger can get you into trouble. Actually, sometimes it helps you move color better too. So you got to do both of them. So we'll put a little bit of the light there, just like that. And let's just tap a little bit of the light out on this one as well just like that just an idea of that bee there we go just an idea we'll paint some more flowers we'll come back and work those wings just one more time wings are something that I you know, you, we, we kind of paint for transparency here but we want to, they're, they're basically pretty dark. And, you know, if you want to do a lot of detail to a bee and to a wing, they'd have a lot of little veins and stuff into them. But, you know, these are just quick little, quick little paintings here. So, now let's, and the main part here is we want to get this nice dark 
right up here right where it interacts with that right there and um, of course we'll add some um, feet and stuff like that here in just a minute we got to get some of this other area here into this rose okay let's go up and let's paint this rose here let's go in and um, rework some of our colors let's do a big brush first I love to do casual big brush let's just take some of our yellows that are right down here look at the colors watch the colors on your palette knock them together see if it's going too green then right right up here and grab a little bit of that reddish tone in there let's get some tone into these here this one that yellow those are going to be pretty that yellow is pretty tone here see you pick up that tone on the top of the bird and we'll get it down to the B here so that's a good choice and we can get a little bit of the reddish colors into there as well and so we'll grab just a little bit of that reddish tone a little bit of black I haven't got the cool yet this is just the Naplo red light we'll get just a little bit of that into the flowers see how very casual when I paint those in there it gets those tones in there let's just pick up a little corner of our Naplo of, of our red violet a little corner into what'll be the cool centers of those uh, roses there like that let's grab some Hansa right out over here so we have these tones some grayer tones some white right out here that we can uh, work some of these things let's just do a big brush here for a second we'll just come in and just just add some big brush petals here Let's get some nice brighter Hansa there as well. Here, these little flowers. Here, out like that. So pull across and in, and you've got to imagine you're working around the, the little bowl here. The colors coming in and out there, and you know, so these petals are all going in and out of that center, and. They can go in all different kinds of ways here. It's kind of nice to set them up with the big brush. You see how casual those go. Let's set up this outside ones here. And just let these, let's let these vignette and get soft out here like that. Then we'll set some bigger ones in right up into the front. Here, and I pick up a lot of paint and I just deposit that right there a lot of paint right there like that there we go we'll put that shape of that one in there one of the things I want to do I, I didn't do here yet and I usually do it by now is, is shoot in some leaves and I just got kind of wrapped up into the bird and the bee there and I didn't get any green into my leaves so I want to take some Hansa and some a little bit of blue here and some of this Hansa and we'll make some various greens here and we want to just shoot in and jet in some of these greens especially before we go do those edges of the um, the petals those those petals here there we go and we want to just shoot in green here imagine like little calyx and stuff and other little things going on out here and just just moving out here let's put some back behind the here back behind the bee and up to the top up here that's good we can't forget the feet on the bird done that in a few paintings and it's not really uh it's not very professional forget the bird the one painting i did with with a beautiful um a yellow goldfinch and i stuck him between two branches of a tree just kind of wedged it and he was supposed to be gripping onto it i forgot to add the the feet and and uh and the painting which i have to this day i just laugh at it when i see it no i didn't go back and fix it i I kind of just reminds me every time I look at it. Add bird's feet. That's one of the things I check. Is add bird's feet. So, <laughs> okay, 
So I have a painting sitting there that always remind me. Let's take a let, let's let's do that right now so I don't get into trouble. A little bit of brownish color, brown black. Uh, the 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 uh, party list uh, feet are and legs are more of a brown yellow. So let's just let's just just drop those in right in there, right in there like that. Just a quick little suggestion of those. You know we don't have to. It's nice here. We have this rose coming, you know, to to uh, cover some of that up. So we can just put a little bit in there and just say, okay, there's there's going to be his feet here, right there. And that's a better angle right there. Okay, so let's drop some of those. He's got a little bit, and then that, you know, they got just the tiniest little, like, almost like elbow that comes down and then bends in. So that's all he needs right there. Just something to say, yep, it's there. And we'll add a couple smaller little leaf units like this right there. There we go. We'll add a little darker uh, black, some uh, blue here. And we'll just do a little bit of the shadowing here on the leaves. Right around the center area here. Right in there like that. There. Not too much. We want this to vignette and just kind of go away back out there like that. Just, you know, use that brush and just kind of lighten up. Just tap it and lighten up those corners out there like that. That's, that's very pretty when you do that. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to uh, put in perfect leaves. These are sketches like this that are very painterly. Very, very painterly. Okay. Let's get back and work on this, uh, rose here again get some yellows going in there toned versions of it but let's get those yellows in there and we'll get some edges to these uh, petals here we'll come in here to the center I want to make a centers that kind of close up just a bit here so I'll just take some thick paint and almost like little common stroke things go around to establish that little center let's get a little brighter yellow in there as well and you can reestablish any of those shadows just by taking a little shadow on your brush and just pulling through like that but you got to imagine a little center here smaller little petals going around and this is what's good about quick compositions like this they cause you to paint flowers quickly smaller little flowers they get a little bit larger and a little bit larger going around to the outside and then the biggest ones are out here you know to the outside here and those are the ones we really want to suggest now I'm doing this all with this this number four very sketchy you could also use the big brush which is nice just to put in you know some of these and you know and then detail them up a little bit more with the four like that so big brush paints these big soft ones really nice and you know I, how much you know what I'm watching is the reaction between the flowers and the bird here too so you know and how much softness I'm going to soften that just a bit there so there's a lot of things that I look at when I'm painting the bird. I'm going to let this flower, though, go pretty white in here as well. We'll just drop some petals out here, pull some out like that. And again, we're, we paint them quickly, so we'll pull some shadows out like that. Drop another row in there, pull some out. Here, we can get some of that nice, more brown, yellow brown here. 
little black and red even touch a little green into that makes beautiful a little bit of that green in there just yellow the yellow greens that just a bit and that goes so well with this composition since we have a lot of yellow green you could use that to help you know reestablish in your your center pull back and forth back and forth with those colors establishing that nice center you know shadow where you draw on another petal there like that let's small down the center there and a little more red violet work that around that center there pretty little rose there we go and let's quickly just kind of say okay here's a rose bud here boom look at that rose bud right there right there like that and maybe a little shadowy green here and idea of a movement of a stem there maybe a little brown onto that there and we'll come back here and set a little soft here Little, the outside edges here are very lost. You let this, you know, just a little bit. Sometimes I'll just give a little idea of the petals here. And uh, we'll let that go there. And let's get some more white. Out like that. And you can pull little whites onto the edge like that. Just kind of corner you'll see in the techniques the cornering with the little flat brush I do that a lot I draw the edge of the petal and then I just pull out and don't play with it too many times or you'll lose the transparency of that edge you know just don't play with it too many times you want to preserve that transparency and if you stroke it too many times you'll lose the transparency so you don't want to do that Here's some light color right in there. There we go. Just very casual. I love this type of fun painting, fast painting like this. A little bigger composition than a, than a, what I usually do on a quick composition. So it'll take just a little bit longer than normal. But it's nice to have and try compositions, quick compositions of all different types of sizes. But we won't paint this as fast as we do the cardinal because there's not as, as uh, I mean, there's more stuff going on here. So it'll take us a little bit longer. Still the same ideas. Here, nice little shape of a bud just pulling around. Get that nice rounding movement there. Maybe the idea of a petal here that's just beginning to open up here. There we go, like that. Let's add a little bit uh, of the light and stuff here to the, like this petal, the, this rose here. I want to have it kind of opened up this way a little bit and then the center petal is kind of folding in and this little bee is climbing on these uh, these center petals over here so pull those around like that and in and they're just kind of climbing around like he's kind of Climbing around like they do. Here on the edge of this petal here. So we'll pull some up. Pull some 
up. He's landed, and now he's making his way to the center. Around like that. Just and see how I always corner this brush like that. You know, work that learned up to, to quickly. It's like I, I I'm feeling a sketch, you know, of it. I'm and learn to work your brush like that, almost very sketchy. And using the corner. And that's where you get a lot of your interest in your painting is using different parts of your brush. You know, you have a flat brush, but don't just use it flat. Use the corners, use other things. You know, do it, do uh, all kinds of rock and roll with it and do different things with it. That's what's going to get the interest to it. Here. go so he's kind of climbing around out there on that bit and we want to we want to clean up his head there just right into that right there and we'll add um I'm gonna rinse I don't rinse very often but rinse that out because I got thick paint into my little round and if you're going to do a, a lot of real detail work with this, uh, when you, and you're using very thick paints like this, this is the only time I will add a little bit of water to thin out just a bit to, uh, to do some uh, detail work here. Like under the bee, we can add some little, uh, you know, like the idea of his little uh, legs and stuff here. You know, gripping on to that and just leave that very lost here and we'll get a little more yellow back and forth I love to play those this is the interest area right in here on him so I'll play those two areas right there and a little stroke of light just a little highlight on the top of his head here. Not too light. You can always take it down with just a little bit of black in your brush there. Like that. Maybe a, a little uh, stroke there onto his wing. There, like that. Just very, very... Very, very casual little bee. And then we'll put some, let's come in and put some uh, lighter, brighter, little uh, yellows right in here that will kind of hide him just a bit. Right there, let's drop some of that brighter yellow right in here. Maybe a little edge, so I'll work a little edge of the white here. Right like that on the edge of that flower. And that edge right there. edge right there that's nice and just come back and add a few little ideas of these lights I like that light tracking right in through there like that we can add uh, some of that right to a idea of a leaf here as well just let that if you're using an edging technique and I'll say this several times in books and videos and stuff if you're using an edging technique on the uh, on the flowers. You should do a couple of leaves, at least a couple of leaves with that type of edging technique so the leaves look like they go with the flowers. They'll have the same types of uh, techniques painted on them. And uh, that's always a good thing to remember because you have to create a harmony between your leaves and flowers. And so that's, and that will do it using exactly the same type of technique or edging technique and stuff that will 
that will do it for you. So this is a little different. Some lot of yellows and blues and colors here. Through and uh, very, very casual, quick painting here. Going through and break up into this center a little bit more here into that center but a quick little uh, fun painting here uh, quick composition and you can take some final uh, you know big colors like I might take a little bit uh, of my uh, blue blue green type of color right through here and just just pop some of that right down in here like this and again vignette that out I love those, you know, like light, light strokes of it coming out through like that. Very, very painterly. Uh, very nice painterly uh, movement of color like this. Just when you got that, you know, those, uh, that color in there like that, it's nice to do that. To come back in and go bang like this and just move the color a little bit. It just gives that nice, you know, movement and and a little bit more body to the color right in there, uh, which is uh, a wonderful thing to have. And here, especially like right next to that B, we'll get just a little bit more movement there. Right next to that B. Here, to soften his edge there a little. So you see just a little bit of him there. Okay, there you go. Give that a try. Paint very fast. Set up those vignettes of color and paint very fast. And when you paint a bird or you paint a flower or everything like that don't paint everything perfect leave those lost edges those help a lot work through these several times try painting flowers and quickly going through and painting the birds especially those birds because we tend to get them too detailed too fast okay so give some of these uh, quick compositions a try and uh, we have a lot more and a lot more of them coming i'll see you on the other videos